Okay guys, so today's video is going to be how to estimate a concrete driveway. This is a video that I've owed you guys for a while. I actually did make this video last year around this time and I actually had you at a customer's, potential customer's house. Unfortunately for that, I did make the video and it got deleted somehow out of my computer and I even lost the raw footage. So I've owed you this for a while. I do apologize, it's taken time. Once, so if we were going to cement this pathway here, let's just say for instance, okay, so, Let's just say we're going to go 25 feet. So you measure here to the 25. So the 25 feet is going to be the length we're going to go. So now we got to figure out the width. So we'll hook it to this tape because there's cement under here. So we'll hook it to here and walk you back. So let's just say we're going to go to the line of the vehicles. So that's going to bring you to about 23 feet. All right, so we know our driveway pathway is going to be 25 by 23. So it's Okay, so your driveway is going to be 25 feet long by 23 feet wide. You're going to multiply the two, and that's going to equal 575 square feet. Uh, now, if you want to start figuring out the material you're going to need for this job, you're going to do 575 divided by 80, which would equal 7.1 yards. Now, that's at an exact 4-inch pour. Now, when I'm doing a 4-inch pour, I like to figure uh, dividing it by 70, which would equal 8.2 yards. So then I would tell the concrete company around 8.5 or 9 yards. I always like to order a little extra, especially with flat work. Because sometimes it's a little tough to get it exactly at the depth that you want it. Or sometimes you may be short for whatever reason. So you absolutely never want to run out of cement. Especially if you're only pouring one truck like this. So now this is where I would give the customer options. Uh, they could do 4 inches with wire or 6 inches with wire. 4 inches is the city code. That's what all concrete needs to be except in the driveway apron where on the city land, which has to be seven inches thick. So I like to give the people the option and they could decide for how much money they would like to spend. Okay, let's go back to the video. Now, over here, this is dirt. So on many houses, you're going to rip out existing concrete, but if you're going to remove dirt or stone, always remember it's double. Uh, a lot of people, they get confused when they dig out dirt, they don't estimate it for enough dirt to leave. The dirt gets fluffy when you dig it up. So even though the liquid concrete will figure out to a certain amount of square footage, the dirt will be double that. Okay, so since we know this project is going to take about eight to nine yards of concrete, if you double that, that's 18 yards. So figure it's going to be one 20 yard dumpster or one larger dump truck load out. Now, if you're going to start getting into a d thicker pour or you want to put in a thicker stone base, that means you're going to have even more material coming out. So just to cover the new liquid cement is going to be that one dumpster. So anything that you're going to dig out more, if you're going to do a different sub base or maybe there is no sub base, you need to figure out that there's going to be more material leaving. So Let's just say if you were thinking of doing a six inch pour at the very least, you're going to have seven yards and then you could chop that in half for the extra two inches to make up the six. So now you're going to be at about 10 and a half to 11 yards. So now if you double that up, you're over 20 yards. So now that's about 22 to 25 yards plus if you have a sub base. So you're going to have to keep that all into account that now you're going to go into multiple loads of material leaving the job site. So you have to be very wary about that. The next
next thing is when you're doing these estimates is accessibility. How accessible is the site? Can you back the cement truck into the lot easily? Are you gonna carry it with a bobcat? Are you gonna wheel it? Are you going to dump it right off the truck? Uh, all of that's gonna matter in the time factor. Uh, when I estimate a driveway for a private owner, private homeowner like this, I would rip it out one day, set it up, even if it's a half a day of work, and then pour it the next morning, get an eight o'clock truck. And the reason why I like eight o'clock trucks is because the concrete is as fresh as it can be. Um, when you get those, those loads at 12, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, they could be, tend to be hot loads. The drum has been turning all day long, so the, the concrete is actually cooking. So not only is the concrete gonna get harder faster, so not only will the concrete itself be cooking, but you'll also be dealing with the height of the heat for the day. So generally the hottest part, portion of the day is going to be from 1 p.m. to about 4 p.m. So you're not only laying down cooked cement, but you're now making it dry incredibly faster than it really is going to want to. Concrete likes to dry and cure in a slower manner. That's why you'll see people the next day or over the next few days uh, just gently hosing down the cement to keep it cool. This way, the cement cures slower. It actually will make it stronger and make the top layer more durable. So that's why, and also if you look at when they do cement bases for highways, they're constantly watering down that concrete. That is the reason why. So generally, I would always say that these jobs are going to take two days or maybe two and a quarter because uh, you'll have to go back and strip the boards and put some dirt in the holes that you had to cut out so you could fit the lumber. Um, so after you get to the point of how thick you're going to do the pour, uh, the next couple of you know the next couple of things is you're going to put wire mesh in it. Uh, some concrete companies will put the fiber mesh reinforcement in it. Uh, over here in my area, we tend to put the wire mesh. Uh, they don't put the fiber mesh in the cement. So that's something uh, that you'll always want to keep in mind. It's a few dollars. It's cheap insurance. You might as well put it. Uh, when you're doing a driveway, I would prefer doing the wire over rebar. Uh, rebar is good if you don't want the slab to move. Uh, but since you want a driveway to have flexibility uh, to prevent cracking, the wire mesh would be the best fit. Uh, even if the cement should crack, the wire mesh won't allow it to spread. Uh, so I prefer putting the wire mesh in driveways. Uh, so as for expansion joints, I also like to give people options. You could use the homosote expansion joints, which is the cheapest option, but to me it's the worst option because... That ho those homosote joints are going to rot out in a year or two, leaving the homeowner with a hole that they're going to have to fill with cork, or you're going to have to come back, saw cut the joint, and then fill it in with cork, which would increase the price of the job. And I don't feel it looks nice with the cork. Uh, I prefer to use pressure-treated lumber as the joints because you can get them perfectly straight, they'll never move, and the pressure-treated wood doesn't rot. So that's my personal preference. Uh, some people would rather have a commercial finish, I say that in air quotes, uh, which would be just saw cutting the joints with a chop saw, which again, those are my two preferred methods, but uh, for commercial jobs, like when you do a parking lot, uh, that would be a better look. Uh, the look is not really that nice when you saw cut the cement, in my opinion, for a homeowner, uh, but again, it's all personal preference. I actually had a couple of homeowners who wanted the saw cuts because they did not want the little bump that the pressure treated wood and the edger would make. Uh, so this way the kids were able to play basketball or skateboard without having to worry to get hooked on anything. Because sometimes when you pass with the edger, even if you're super careful, it makes a slight indentation in the cement. So those customers opted for the chop saw lines and they loved it. Uh, saw cutting the joints in is probably the best way to do it though. Or with the, like I said, the pressure treated wood because those two methods, you could put the joint all the way through the slab, which is the way you should. A lot of times with the homosote joints, you have to rip them in half in order to push them in. 
Uh, so I per- personally myself don't like the home so joints. Like I said, they rot, leave holes. To me, I don't like it. It's the cheapest job. So that's what we tend to do normally because it's just the fastest way. It's the cheapest way. But I prefer when we do a custom homeowner job, those are the two methods that I like. So let's break down some of the numbers for the uh, excavating and the labor portion of this. Okay, guys, I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope this video has helped you out to help guide you in the basics of estimating a concrete driveway. Uh, If you have any questions, comments, like it, dislike it, think I'm an idiot, think I'm a genius, please leave it in the comments down below. I always like to hear other people's opinions. And as always, guys, please be safe, take care, and I will talk to you guys on the next one. And always remember, hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more.